I have a challenge for you. If false proof pi equals zero using differential calculus, it's pretty simple. Why doesn't it break math? Drop a comment down below. Even if they're already there, share your thoughts without checking them out. So here we have the function y equals tan x is sine x over cosine x. And we know that when the denominator is zero, the function is undefined. So cosine x is undefined at pi over two or negative pi over two. So we can sort of use this to draw the graph of tan x. And here we notice that we have vertical asymptotes at negative pi over two and positive pi over two. This is when the denominator is zero, as I said. So we can draw these vertical lines, x is equal to negative pi over two and x is equal to positive pi over two. And we can gra graph the function y equals tan x that looks something like this, okay? Now once we've graphed y equals tan x, we're going to graph the inverse of tan. And remember to graph the inverse of the function, you just have to switch the variables x and y. So here what we can do is instead of if you're trying to graph y equals arc tan x, horizontal asymptotes become vertical asymptotes and vice versa, x and y the roles are switched. So our graph is now going to have horizontal asymptotes at y is equal to pi over 2 and y is equal to negative pi over 2. And if we try to draw the graph of arc tan x, we're going to get the following. It's going to have the same shape as tan. It's going to look something like this. And here we're going to have the graph of arc tan x. Now, once you have the graph of arc tan x, what do you know? Well, you know that the limit as x goes to infinity of arc tan x is going to equal to plus pi over 2. And pi is coming in here already. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity of arc tan x is going to equal to negative pi over 2. Now, I'm going to construct a cool new function, okay? And this function is going to give us the proof that pi is equal to zero. And what's that function going to be? So the function is going to be the following. So I'm going to graph this here. And I'm going to use a little bit of differential calculus too. So this is where things get really um, spicy. We're going to take the function y equals to arctan x plus arctan 1 over x. So y is equal to arctan x plus arctan 1 over x. Okay, now with this function, we remember the derivative of arctan x. Okay, so I've done a video on the derivatives of inverse trig functions. They seem a little messy, but they're super beautiful. The inverse trig functions are complicated. The derivatives are nice. So here, the derivative of arctan x, I'm going to write this down here. Arctan x prime, okay, pretty weird function. Its derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so now if we have this function y, we can differentiate it. Okay, so we're going to differentiate it. We're going to get y prime is the derivative of arctan x, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And you can take this on faith if you haven't seen it. But that video, check it out. Links in the description. That video will have the derivative. And I'll link it at the end of this video as well. So 1 over 1 plus x squared plus the derivative of arctan 1 over x, which is the chain rule. So first we differentiate arctan. Then we differentiate the 1 over x and multiply them. So the derivative of arctan is 1 by 1 plus x squared. But here the argument is 1 over x. So by the chain rule, we put 1 over x squared. And then we multiply with the derivative of 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. If you use the power rule, it is negative x to the negative 2 or negative 1 over x squared. So we're going to multiply with negative 1 over x squared. And we're going to have this. So remember, the, the mistake can come anywhere. Okay, So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of cheating you here. But you have to point out what the mistake is at the end. So here we're going to get 1 over 1 plus x squared plus so now we can write out this, okay, we can make a denominator. We have x squared plus 1 over x squared. We're putting a common denominator here. So the x squared goes on top. x squared plus 1 over x squared, it becomes x squared by 1, over one, by one plus x squared. Okay, so we're going to get x squared divided by 1 plus x squared. And then we're going to multiply with negative 1 over x squared. And of course, here we see that these two cancel. The x squared and the x squared cancel, but we have a negative sign. So we have 1 over 1 plus x squared, negative 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is going to be 0. So the derivative of arctan x plus arctan 1 over x is 0. That means it's a pretty simple function. It's a constant function, right? And now we know that because it's a constant function, the only functions which are derivative 0 are constants. And we know these limits, right? We're going to use these limits now. I'm going to show you what is the limit as x goes to infinity of this function, and what is the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this function. Well, it's a constant function. So let's write out these limits. Limit x goes to in infinity of this function, arctan x plus arctan 1 over x. Okay, so plus arctan 1 over x. Well, the limit as x goes to infinity of arctan x is pi over 2. We saw that in the graph just now. Um, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote. And the limit as x goes to infinity of arctan 1 over x, well, 1 over x is going to go to 0 as x goes to infinity. So it's arctan 0, which is 0.
because tan of zero is zero. Okay, remember, anywhere I could be, I could be lying to you. But here we're going to get this limit is going to be plus pi over two. On the other hand, this has to equal, because it's a constant function, right? So it has to equal the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function, because we know its derivative is zero, of arctan x plus arctan one over x. And now, we, are, we know that as arctan, as x goes to negative infinity, arctan approaches negative pi over two. That was the graph I drew earlier. So that was a horizontal asymptote at negative infinity. So this was going to equal to negative pi over two, plus you know one over x as x goes to negative infinity, you get zero for one over x, and then arctan of zero is zero, because tan of zero is zero. So we're gonna get plus zero, which is going to be just negative pi over two. But therefore, pi over two is equal to negative pi over two, and that implies that pi is equal to zero. So at any stage here, I may have lied to you. Drop a comment down below what your thoughts are, and try not to look at the comments, drop your thoughts, and also try to talk a little bit more about this function. Why is its derivative zero? What's going on to this function? Pretty cool, right, that its derivative is zero, because it looks like, why would you expect it to be the case? But it is true. Can you see that trigonometrically as well? Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best. I'm excited to see your comments, and I'll see you in the next video.